Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. We are going to be back taking a look at a variety of models from Cast and Play that I have been busy printing. And I feel like if I don't get to them now, they're just going to continue to pile up like I do with my forever bestie or pile of models. Uh, Dragonborn Barbarian from the Adventurer's Guild set. Um, I forget what this Fallen Angel dude was called from the Depths Below or whatever the Abyssal underworld set was i really like this model anyway uh that's not what we're going to talk about today what i wanted to specifically talk about i just wanted to show those guys off basically uh we have one of their verdant rogues here i don't remember which set this was from exactly but i wanted to use her because she's a nice stable regular sized normal human i don't want you to get the impression that these guys are anywhere near normal size i don't have the guild leader handy that i painted or the bookseller um, let's see if I can find a base for her. That's not the right size. Let's grab this. 32 millimeters, probably more correct. And using our usual stand-ins, just to give you guys a good base line size of where these figures are. So you can see, I mean, she's not overtly large, not too small. I'd say she's going to fit in, and this is the case for most of the human figures from cast and play at this point they're going to fit in quite nicely with i think most typical human models that you may have obviously basing is going to play into an effect there but then again it usually does uh, i was trying to find a basilian i swear i had one here somewhere i'm like no it's a mantic goblin no nope, i have no idea where all my mantic are. But I wanted to give you guys just a good indication, uh, because we're going to be talking about Mantic stuff here in a sec, but a variety of Mantic models, just to give you a good idea, because what I actually want to talk about today are, I believe what they were called were the Void Terrors, and Cast and Play put out this whole set of crazy, multi-limbed, grotesque, undulating, pulsating nastiness that would be perfect, I mean literally perfect, for an up-and-coming Night Stalker army, or just general eldritch monstrosities that you might need on the table. So, the reason I'm pointing out the Mantic stuff is because I think these things are going to be absolutely great, if I can get them in focus there, uh, for any sort of just otherworldly horror, be it RPG, be it mass combat games, you know, Five or six of these alone, you got yourself a nice multi-based unit, and they come in all sorts of poses. So those are more like the grunt style guys. Grab one of the other poses here. This one looks like he's supposed to be like rearing up on his tentacles. But man, you know, get a bunch of these things, get them all multi-based. What a great looking swarm. Now, as I was saying, they also have a bunch of these grunt type guys. I don't remember what any of these are called. I'm just going to call them a whaler, screamer, whatever. And again, just very weird, very disturbing, fun stuff. And what's interesting is that all of their hands are actually an optional part. You don't have to have them with the hands attached. And one of the nice things about that is if you wanted to, let's say, throw some weapons in those arms, then, you know, that might not work out too badly. They also have some more interesting limbs like these. You can see here where the joint would have connected. I just printed mine with their hands on, but definitely an interesting option. Again, you know, if you're not a big fan of the scarecrow-based bodies that Mantic put out, might be a fun set of stuff. And if you wanted to go bigger, they have these things. I, I don't know what they're called again, but again, get a few of those. I think you got yourself a nice selection of just absolute monstrosities on the table. I don't know what's going on. They've got like these weird zigzagged, stitched up skin sacks, for lack of a better word. Some of them also have faces growing out of their hands, because why not? See if you can help your friend stand up there. 
maybe possibly. Again, with a human for scale. Funny thing is I didn't actually print any of the really big monsters that they have. They had these things. I might have shown this guy off on Instagram before. One of the Void Rippers. For whatever reason, one of his tentacles just got clean cut off. Just limbs, teeth, claws everywhere. This one I printed up recently. Fared a little bit better. Did have a misprint on one of his tentacles, but we'll take what we can. They also had some more feral animalistic ones. I want to say this was called like the Hope Eater or something. Most of these are also all single piece unless, you know, you want to have the hands separate. This guy you did have to print the tail on as a separate piece. I don't remember what these are called, but I like this one. A lot more dragonic dragon like and I'm gonna hit all this stuff I got a can of matte purple I'm just gonna hit them all with that and then we're gonna dry brush the crap out of them and I might just multi base look, look it's just already everywhere things going everywhere uh, one of the character models Let's... now this one for whatever reason this is right before my printer decided to get screwy mm believe at the same time that one Void Ripper's tentacle didn't print off, the tip of her wing didn't either, but um, I think it's okay. Got like gooey, stringy slime stuff coming up as she's leaping into the air. Interesting looking figure. I thought there was this perfect, where'd I put him? Perfect looking evil necromancer type dude that they had as well. He was from like their banquet set. As his pets come lurking nearby. Anyway, some fun stuff there. Had a couple other random cast and play models. I figured might as well show them off. Don't want to shoot a whole video on them. If you guys haven't checked out their stuff by now, I mean, one of the things I really like is there's a lot of character in their sculpts. This was their undead king, I believe. He's a big guy. Cape being a nice separate piece. I did not print a base for him yet, I should say. Grabbing our rogue wherever she went buried under the pile of tentacles and teeth see he's a big guy speaking of big guys they also have a recent orc release and just to give you again good sense of scale really nicely sculpted orcs a lot of detail to be had there but they're really big like really big like ogre big. This is just one of the regular generic guys. I mean, he's gonna give these crazy things a good run for their money. But when you get into the characters, that's where things start to really get wild. And I, I thought they were quite impressive. They're bannermen here. Again, a lot of these are in multi-posed options. All of them are also available with or without their hands. So if you wanted to swap weapons or gear, that is totally doable. Like he's got the big horns. I don't know if he's using it as an instrument or it's just there for decoration purposes. Hard to say. But again, really big, really tall. Uh, might make a good Wadroon option if you wanted to go that printed route for putting together a conquest army. They did actually have some mounted dinosaur riders as well. the orc rogue. I mean, you could shrink them down. To me, I'm honestly going to probably paint them up like ogres or something. Match them up with some of my Mere Starklands ogres. Kind of yellowish skin, perhaps. I haven't made up my mind. And what I thought was one of the coolest ones was the orc warlord. 
Again, really fancy base. He's blue tacked on there already. Lots of detail to be had. Lots of supports in his mouth that still need to be cleaned out. But just the variety these guys have been pumping out. A lot of fun sculpts, a lot of character to be had there. And believe it or not, yes, they are in scale with each other, and they are scaled at 32 millimeter, surprisingly. So if that's something that you think might look good on your table, you might want to enjoy painting, uh, we'll have that link down below, obviously. And you absolutely, absolutely, if I get the words out, uh, should give it a good look there. Fun stuff to be had. I am absolutely going to be doing some kind of multi-basing with these things. They're just too fun. Uh, <laughs> they're also going to be a major pain to paint, so something to think about. But yeah, we'll have that link down below. Do check it out, and hope you guys enjoy. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamburlaine with Obscurities and Miniatures. Finally finding the figure I was looking for. Saying thanks for watching, and see you back here soon. Bye-bye.